Good morning, Scott Davis from TechWise Group here. It is April 7th, 2020, coming to you on day 22 of the quarantine here in Pennsylvania. Just wanted to pass along some tips, some news, and some what's going on in technology. Uh, as obviously modern workforce is still the big story as more and more people are working from home and more and more people are trying to figure it out how to balance working from home while working with your kids who are now educating from home. Uh, but kind of just to get started, you know, ransomware is humongous and it is growing rapidly. It is still growing. It is still expanding. And this whole work from home mantra that we are currently in is highlighting the ease of it and making it worse. Um, hospitals right now around the globe are fighting ransomware. Microsoft, other major players are helping these hospitals, you know, fight ransomware, get the data recovered. Uh, another one just yesterday, Coffee County Jail in Tennessee got ransomware. Their files got all locked. They only had paper backups. It's always in the news when you read about ransomware, what's going on, and someone gets it. They didn't have proper backups. Backups are your crucial piece. It doesn't matter how much proactiveness you take, how many pieces, what all you have in place, you know, X, Y, Z before the breach. If you can't recover from a user deleting a file, uh, employee about to get fired, deleting a whole bunch of stuff, or getting ransomware, then it doesn't matter how good the front of your house in IT, how good your proactiveness is, if your reactiveness isn't up to par and ready when you need it. Just looking at ransomware, you know, the average cost of a data breach, um, most ransomware really is a data breach. Uh, most strings of ransomware that are available to download on the dark web, that most of the current uh, variants of ransomware that's out there actually are searching your computer and moving data off your network before it infects your network. So there's a data breach component of almost every ransomware variant that's being pushed out today. So looking at data breach, you know, the average cost in 2019 was one and a half percent higher than it was in 2018, which rang in at $3.92 million. If your data is breached, that is the average cost of a data breach in 2019. Now, some of them, like the recent Marriott's 5.2 million guests, uh, obviously it's going to be a little bit more than that, and Marriott's still reeling from a, a breach previously to that. So there's a lot going on, and you have to take cybersecurity seriously for your business. Even today, when most of your workforce is out of your office, if they're VPNing in, if they're remoting in, if they're you know still communicating, there are still connections between what they are doing at home and your infrastructure either internally or in the cloud. And if you're not taking the proper steps to secure it, that's where you're opening the door or leaving the door unlocked to be breached. Uh, in 2019, looking at ransomware, there was 966 government agencies that reported being um, attacked by ransomware. 1,233 education facilities, 764 healthcare agencies. That's that's a lot. Um, I mean, you look worldwide. I understand that, uh, but that's what's just being reported. Uh, I know for a fact there's organizations, there's businesses, there's medical facilities that have not reported when a breach occurs or when they get ransomware, mainly because their IT department and their IT team doesn't truly understand that a data breach may have happened. So depending on your state's notification laws, your you know, privacy act, it may not even be something that's reportable if you don't know that the potential of a breach occurred. So there's a lot of things that has to be done to get these laws up to date. CCPA, GDPR, uh, New York Shield Act, uh, Massachusetts Data Privacy Law, those are in the right direction, but a lot needs to be done both federally and at the state level. The average payout of ransomware increased 6% from 2018. 
So the average payout when someone pays ransomware is $41,000. So if the average payout is $41,000, it is a good business to be in for these people that are running ransomware. So it's not going away. Uh, it's, ugh, it's not going away, like plain and simple. You have to take the steps today to prepare for ransomware and be prepared reactively for if it hits or when it hits. Uh, those numbers came from the recent IBM security um, kind of survey that they did over 2019. And there's a lot out there. Um, before I get into kind of my work from home topic, I, I do want to just touch on Zoom again, as it seems like Zoom is going to be in the news every day coming up. But if you are using Zoom, stop stop recording your sessions. Um, there's a lot going on right now. The way Zoom saves and stores those videos, they're not encrypted, they're not protected, they're not secured. If you go to YouTube and you search in some of your Zoom recording names, uh, you may find them out there. Or if you change a couple characters, you may find others out there. Uh, it is absolutely being done uh, and there's a lot of online libraries being done so your business meetings your client meetings you know whatever you're using zoom for there could be recordings of it online uh, and they're from what I'm hearing even some of them include pornography um, the other thing that's hit in the news uh, is uh, according to SEC filings the zoom founders cashed in millions of dollars over the first three months of the year it is a little suspicious as you know, everything is kind of ranking in. Uh, I'm sure the SEC is definitely going to review and evaluate that. And if there is a uh, some insider trading going on, a penalty guarantee is gonna be forced. So the next topic I wanna cover is with everything that's going on with COVID-19 and coronavirus and everyone moving faster to this modern workforce, it is really important, I think, right now, if you have internal IT, if you have a one-man IT guy, to really start looking at managed service providers. Um, TechWise Group is a managed services provider, so you know, absolutely full transparency there. Uh, but a managed services provider is set up to lead your technology and success remotely. And it doesn't matter if it's remotely in your office or remotely anywhere. We have established partnerships with security tools that work on the laptop level or in your office. So it doesn't matter where the equipment is, there are tools out there to help protect you. So from antivirus to cloud DNS to just overall advanced security tools that are coming out, dark web monitoring, um, even just understanding how in-depth your Office 365 environment is and how so often it's just set up with the base security permission set, you're not fully securing yourself. You're leaving these doors wide open. It'd be the same if setting up an Office 365 with just those base security principles would be the same thing as leaving the key to your office building underneath the carpet of the front door during a stay-at-home emergency when you can't drive to the office. You're leaving the key to your business right there, just waiting for someone to find it and open the door. With phishing emails, how creative they are getting and how people are, you know, adjusting to work from home, you know, they're not being as careful with the emails that are coming in. So there's a lot of things an MSP can help you for help you with as you transition to the modern workforce. And ultimately, just managing your workstations and servers is a no-brainer. Let us manage your AV, let us manage, you know, let a managed service provider manage your antivirus, your security, your, your, your entire suite of tools. And you know, you're really going to see the savings uh, in the long term, I guarantee it. So definitely take a look at it. Uh, if you wanna know more from me, Scott at techwisegroup.com. I'm always willing to talk to people and help out where I can, uh, or at least direct you to the people on my team that can help you fully. Uh, so that's what I have today. Have a great day. It is April 7th, 2020. 
Um, I know I'm doing good on the uh, whole shutdown. Uh, I hope you guys are as well. So until tomorrow, have a great day.